I woke up sleeping on a concrete floor with two mating roaches crossing my eyesight. It was really uncomfortable like sleeping on a flat surface boulder and the crack of my neck wasn't making waking up any fun either. Suddenly, the door before me opened up. I slowly stood up. The breeze of the cold seemed to fill the air and when the door opened and what appeared to be an apparition at the door didn't make it any more welcoming. Slightly disoriented, I couldn't bear lying there anymore and the darkness around me was giving me a real reason to find a way out. I walked through the door in a well-lit hallway. It was beautiful. 1960s, large and eloquently decorated with vanilla wallpaper, artwork from various painters around the world, and the wooded flooring felt like cedar. Walking through the hallway, I noticed many bottles of wine scattered across the corners of the floors. Someone here had a very serious problem. Pictures of a man and his wife dressed like my grandfather and my grandmother before their golden years. The looks of happily ever after didn't seem to reflect the atmosphere of this large beauty. The clock to my right read 2359, military time. Someone must have been in the services here, but the clock must have been broken because it didn't tell time correctly. I couldn't help but hear the radio down the hall. took place while the family was gathered at home on a Sunday afternoon. The day of the crime, the father went to the trunk of his car, retrieved the rifle, and shot his wife as she was cleaning up the kitchen after lunch. When his 10-year-old son came to investigate the commotion, the father shot him too. His six-year-old daughter had the good sense to hide in the bathroom, but reports suggest he lured her out by telling her it was just a game. The girl was found shot once in the chest from point-blank range. The mother, who he shot in the stomach, was pregnant at the time. Police arriving on scene after neighbors called 9-11 found the father in his car listening to the radio. Several days before the murders, neighbors say they heard the father repeating a sequence of numbers in a loud voice. They said it was like he was chanting some strange spell. There was another family shot to death in the same state last month, and in December last year, a man used a rifle and meat cleaver to murder his entire family. In each case, the perpetrators were fathers. State police say this string of domestic homicides appears unrelated, though it could be part of a larger trend such as employment, child care, and other social issues facing the average family. Domestic abuse. There's nothing funny about abusing your spouse. Children don't deserve the abuse either. Death is just as bad, though, but suffering is much worse. Growing up in a broken home will sharpen your attitude slowly, but dull your emotions, too. But why would a guy want to kill his pregnant wife and his kids? I made my way to the end of the hallway, down the small wooden stairs. Opening it up would only begin to puzzle me even further. I was right back at the beginning where I started. Same hallway, same artwork, same bottles of wine. What the hell is going on? I must be hallucinating or something though because this defies all logic. I walked down the same hallway again and the doors were closed. Out of curiosity, I walked down again to examine everything. Yep, it was all the same. As I walked back through the previous hallway where I entered... I just felt this sudden feeling of deja vu. Suddenly the door to my right started pounding as if someone was locked in. I kept my distance as I backtracked. I looked back to the end of the hallway and the door was open again. I was very reluctant, but I had a feeling that I was going to be back where I started. I walked through. Same thing. Everything was the same. Is this some kind of joke? Who would create such a devious game? I've known serial killers who have been clever before, but who would go this far to defy logic? I walked down the hallway again, and suddenly I heard an even harder pound on the door, followed by cries of a woman. Wherever it was coming from, I just kept moving on. 
Something was developing in this endless loop and I had a feeling that it was pretty sinister. I went through the loop again. And still, nothing has changed. I walked to the end of the hallway and as I began to get closer, the door ominously shut on its own. This place is haunted, I thought to myself. Just out of reaction, I slowly walked backwards. And as I walked backwards, and the door behind me opened. And as I looked to the left door, I looked to the ground. Suddenly, Roaches started escaping. And before I knew it, I started hearing cries of a baby echoing from the room. Fear began to take over as I started hesitantly walking closer and closer to the door. I began peeping in, but suddenly a ghastly figure quickly shut the door. I couldn't tell what it was or who it was, but all I could say is that this figure looked very ghastly and unwelcoming. In the blink of an eye, the door shut and the door at the end of the hallway unlocked and opened up. I had a feeling this was not a game. I kept walking until I started the loop all over again, making my way to the end of the hall. The cries of the woman echoed through the hallway again. As I turned to the right, I saw a very tall and gaunt figure ahead of me. This mysterious figure before me did not look friendly at all. The lamp's light above me only revealed just a little bit of her facial features and the rags that appeared to be a torn dress. Standing defiantly tall and on one high heel, she didn't budge once, and being only five feet seven inches, I felt obscurely small. Something wasn't right about this figure. The lights turned off and she disappeared. I walked through the darkness. And as I walked forward, the lights turned back on and suddenly, all over the place, were cockroaches. I was making progress in some sick way, but I had to keep pressing forward. I knew that I would eventually have to confront something of this otherworldly evil that I have witnessed. Thankfully, the lights were still on as I began walking through this endless loop of madness. As I progressed through the end of the hallway, the door to my right opened up by itself, stopping me in my tracks. I should have known better to get curious and walk in, but there was a small light flickering at the wall. It was a bathroom, all dark, grungy, and full of bugs just scuttling around the tiles. I bent over and what I picked up was a flashlight just flickering, rolling all over the tile floor. The door behind me shut and I was locked in, in the dark with a flashlight and crammed into a small grungy bathroom. This couldn't get any worse. I looked over to my right and the cries of a baby began filling the room. I looked into the sink and what I saw was even more disgusting and disturbing. It was a living, breathing baby fetus. The fetus began crying like a normal baby, disfigured and undeveloped as a human. Before I knew it, the footsteps outside started making its way to the door. And whoever was outside seemed to be really eager to get in. Whoever was walking into the hallway couldn't get into the bathroom. And the more and more the person struggled with the door, the baby began crying even louder. I thought I was the only one here, but it seems like there's another here too. By all the bad luck in the world, I just couldn't seem to find that person and I was being stalked by a ghostly figure. Suddenly the bathroom door opened. With no one in sight and with me being just a little bit more paranoid and fearful, I began walking through the loop and this madness began all over again. I needed to get the hell out of here, and fast. I began the loop again, and I noticed something as the door opened. It's getting darker. The lights in the hallways are shutting off one by one, and the distance I heard in the radio broadcast from earlier was playing again. It was deja vu repeating all over again. I listened to the broadcast again to see if anything had changed. And then I heard the person on the radio say, Oh God, what now? Now this is really starting to scare me. The more I listened, the more I heard some strange things coming from the broadcast and the news. The static on the radio got even heavier, and it was followed by a series of numbers. Was this a series of numbers that I heard about earlier? I walked further ahead of me and the man said, I 
I was already beginning to feel the cold shivering down my spine, and my instincts told me to keep walking. I turned around and I saw nothing, but something on the table caught my attention. It was the picture of the couple together. The picture had something written on it that read, gouge it out. This is some kind of sick joke. It seemed like the picture was slowly coming to life, and just like earlier, my curiosity got the best of me. It said gouge it out, and I think it was talking about the eye. I'm guessing that figure that I saw earlier was the woman who was killed, and the picture was her once upon a time. I put the finger through the eye of the woman on the picture, and blood popped and flowed down the picture into my fingers. And suddenly, I heard a lock on the door open up. It seemed that I was progressing further into a twisted game of cat and mouse, and I surely was the mouse being hunted by lions. I walked through the loop just like before. Everything was the same as before. The baby crying, but this time, it wasn't in the sink. I heard footsteps this time, and it was only coming from the floor above me. The radio was off, and I had a feeling walking through this time, I was going to have another strange encounter. I start walking past the main door, and the window sill to my upper left fell on the ground, nearly hitting me. Now I'm being hunted like game. The footsteps above were cutting closer and closer. And as I looked above the balcony, I saw a sinister figure staring down at me. It was the tall and gaunt woman that I saw earlier. And this time, her face wasn't hidden. This woman looked down upon me with a wicked smile on her face. And it surely showed that she had evil intentions on her mind. I had to be on my guard now because I learned that she was real. Like she was marking her prey before she goes in for the kill. Slowly, I started backing off into the shadows, and she started backing up as well, with her head twitching spastically. I had to keep moving forward, and at the same time, I had to prepare for a possible showdown with this sinister woman. Going through the loop once again, I began to hear something even stranger. The sounds of a heavy object swinging above me began echoing all over the hallway. I began walking further into the main part of the hall, and I saw what appeared to be a fridge, a very large fridge swinging above me. Even stranger, the light of the lamp now had a red light replacing the beautiful white light it once had. That fridge must have been at least 500 pounds and was ticking like a clock. Something was dripping at the bottom of the fridge. I put my hand out and I saw that it was blood. I didn't know if it was human or animal blood. Either way, someone was slaughtered here and hung up inside that swinging fridge. The radio played again. I heard two voices, one clear and another one deeper and muffled as the voices spoke just a moment between one another. An umbilical cord or a garden hose, which one was it? I'm beginning to think I'm not on planet Earth anymore and just maybe I'm slowly walking further into hell. What the hell could possibly be in the next loop? I had to walk through and find out myself. The loop started again. No more darkness. But it began to feel a little bit more like hell. In the background, I heard sounds of a baby panicking and crying out loud. It was really beginning to disturb me because I really wanted to help this baby. Even worse, as I walked through the main hallway, the fridge was swinging violently and it looked like it could fall down at any time. I noticed something written on the wall near the main door. It read, I can hear them calling me from... From where? I had a feeling I knew where it was coming from, but I didn't want to believe it. I started backtracking, thinking the ghost of the woman was going to attack me. I noticed something written on the wall where the first dresser was in the hallway. The word hello. That's an interesting way to introduce yourself, especially in a place like this. I looked to my left to see if anybody was following me, and then I looked back. And there was a letter missing. H-E-L-O. I kept turning away and I looked back and the letters kept disappearing until I saw the letter O. It all started coming together as I walked through the main door. The words written on the wall aptly said, I can hear them calling me from hell. I read it. And the moment I read it, the laughs of otherworldly evil started filling the hallways. Yeah. I am now officially walking into Satan's realm. I went further through the loop, and everything was quiet, too quiet. I turned to the right and I saw the clock, and it was finally midnight. As I walked further along to the main room, the light was bright red, and this time the radio was broadcasting again. It was strange though because the voice on the radio was deeper, almost satanic in tone, 
but was speaking another language. I'm no expert in foreign languages, but it sounded European. Maybe French, Swedish, German, or even Portuguese. ended with him saying those numbers 204863 what the hell is the significance of these numbers I know the number of the beast is 666 what does 204863 have to do with this place I got quiet again and it was time to progress further into this hell it seems I'm going face to face with my own fears but the only way to conquer them is to take them head on as I walked through the door something above the door was written Forgive me, Lisa. There's a monster inside of me. I walked through the loop again, and for the first time since walking these hallways, it changed. The hallway was blinking, but this time it was a true endless loop. I was walking faster as if time was speeding up. No matter how far I walked, it truly seemed as if I was stuck walking in circles. But what disturbed me even more was the pictures on the wall. Human eyeballs looking all over the place, and even looking at me. I must have circled this place a thousand times. I'm never going to find my way out of here. After what felt like was forever, I was ready to give up. And then I noticed a picture on the floor touching the bottom of the wall. Nothing had ever attacked me or stalked me, so I was pretty numb to the fear. I took a peep inside of this people, and for the first time in what felt like ages, something different happened. The radio played again in the background as I peeped through. It was the same voice from the radio broadcast earlier. I knew now that this was something deeper than a game. Losing a job would make any man go mad, especially damaging his pride. I guess what I read above the door meant something. This man was a monster, and after hearing the murder of a woman while peeping through, I could only guess what was to come. I pulled my head back away from the people, and as I looked above, there were words written there. No turning back now. Yeah, that's an understatement. I walked into the door, and it was the bathroom from the hallway. I saw the baby fetus there, and suddenly it came to life and spoke to me. You got fired, so you drowned your sorrows in booze. She had to get a part-time job working a grocery store cash register. Only reason she could earn a wage at all is the manager liked how she looked in a skirt. You remember, right? Exactly ten months back. What the hell? This thing was crying earlier, and now it's speaking to me. What was even scarier was the voice that came out of the fetus's mouth was the exact same voice from the radio broadcast. So this woman, Lisa, had to get a job to make wages while her husband was poisoning himself with booze. She got a job because how she looked in a skirt? Ten months back. This happened recently? What was even stranger was the fetus. The fetus talked to me as if I was the one who killed her. The world is hell, and apparently I was living in his. I began to walk through the halls again, and even as they were still blinking red, there was no disorientation. I saw that there was a light at the end. I couldn't be happier, but at the same time, it was dark. I tread through the loop again, and suddenly, I was right back where everything started. 
I was locked in place. No door open, no way to progress, no hints, no clues. And everything was still locked at midnight. I heard the numbers 204863 be enchanted again. 204863. 204863. And I was slowly beginning to lose my vision. I started getting weak, lightheaded. The more lightheaded I got, I suddenly fainted. I woke up again, and the next thing I remembered, I was right back in the concrete room. I looked all around, and I noticed there was something at the right corner behind me. It was a paper bag, and below it there was blood. I was too afraid to even look inside to see what it was. I had a feeling that there was a human head inside of it. But that was just purely speculation. As I walked through the door, the hallway was almost pitch black. It was raining outside, and equipped only with a flashlight, I began treading all over this place again. I looked back at the clock, and it was 23.59. Did I just go back in time? Surely this can't be possible. Then again, after what I have experienced, anything here could be possible. I started looking around here, and noticed that there were pieces of a picture scattered all around the hallway. I looked hard too. In a ficus plant, near the bottles of booze near the clock, on the corner of the first dresser on the left hall, in the upper arc of the halls, and on the wooden stairs near the door where the loop restarts. As I started piecing this picture together, I noticed that there were words written all over the picture. Lightly written, but seemed to be phrases. There was still a piece missing. And after searching high and low, I never found it. I reached into my pocket and to my surprise, the last piece was there. I completed the picture, and there was something written there, and it read, My voice, can you hear it? This sign, can you read it? I'll wait forever if you'll just come to me. This was the woman who was killed, and this must be the same woman haunting this place. This was starting to make a lot of sense. As I was piecing this together in my mind... I heard the sounds of a bell toning in the halls. This place was starting to get very cold. My jacket could only keep me so warm, and I had a terrible feeling that she was nearby. How do you prepare to face a ghost? How the hell am I to survive here? I have no food, no clean water to drink, and surely not enough light to keep the dark from scrambling my mind. I started to walk around with my flashlight aimed everywhere. I heard her cries coming from random places in the hall. I must have taken ten steps when I heard the laugh of a baby. Children scare me, but babies always seem to really brighten up my day. This was just getting stranger by the minute. As I continued to try to figure out where this baby was coming from, I turned around and I saw a ghost. It was Lisa, the woman who was murdered in this house along with her children and her unborn child. This tall and gaunt ghostly woman was walking along this hallway, twitching violently and slowly approaching me. She must have been at least seven feet ahead of me, and before I knew it, she zoomed past me at the blink of an eye. My body was cold, like someone had thrown me into the oceans of Antarctica, and at the same time, my heart was pounding like I was going to burst out of my chest. I could see my breath, and before I began breathing heavily, I was so terrified that I turned around to run. As I turned around, I felt a sudden strangle of cold pressure around my neck, and right as I felt it, the ghost of Lisa appeared right in front of me. I was alive for only a few moments before she dropped my lifeless body to the ground. I couldn't move. I couldn't feel a thing. As I began to fade away, I heard the sounds of my flesh being eaten. I'm glad I didn't feel it because the force of my head being slammed upon the wall and the stranglehold she had upon me felt like years of torture all coming together at once. Before I knew it, I was waking up in the same place where this insane journey to hell began. The place remained the same, and the concrete still hurt to lay down upon. I got up with a crick in my neck, looked around, 
I noticed that the brown paper bag was still there, not to mention that it was still in one piece as well, untouched. I walked closer to the table to inspect the bag, and suddenly the bag moved. A voice came out and gave me a warning. I walked. I could do nothing but walk. And then, I saw me walking in front of myself. But, it wasn't really me. Watch out. The gap in the door. It's a separate reality. The only me is me. Are you sure the only you is you? Now I'm even more confused about where I'm at now. The gap in the door is a separate reality? The only me is me. Are you sure the only you is you? Surely there can't be another me walking around this hell. Did I really just walk through multiple realities? While I was locked in the bathroom, was there another me trying to get into the bathroom? Too many questions to answer at this point. But one thing I want answered is, how the hell do I get out of this place? If I go out there, Lisa will just be waiting to kill me. After the way she killed me, I don't feel like being choked and having my neck broken until the end of time. If there is a separate reality, then why am I still awake? I noticed something interesting about the concrete walls too. Numerous marks all over the place, like a prisoner serving time and waiting to be freed. The storm behind me brewed. How long have I been here? Furthermore, how long have I tried to get out of this place? I began walking through the hallway again. Still, the darkness remained and the chilling cold lingered. I had to find something that would help me. I needed to get out of here. I began walking around this haunted home, searching for anything that could help me get out of here. I kept looping around this hallway. I took a look at the picture of Lisa. As I read the messages, I started to have really strange flashes of words. Words that I understood, others that were spoken in different languages. The more I kept staring at the picture, the more I seemed to understand these words. They seemed to be phrases in different languages. The more I walked through the hallway, the more I seemed to discover hidden messages. I heard voices coming from the radio speaking in different tones. Heart pounding. The moments our hands overlap, we share an instant of private darkness. I walked until I stood one pace before Jack. Something in Spanish, so much that he was trembling. I whispered his name, and the night took the sound of his voice away. The touch felt like cold marble. It was hard to explain, but somehow everything started to make sense. The baby laughing after taking a few steps. I walked till I stood one pace before Jack. The value of eleven and a pace before Jack? Could that mean ten steps? Could Jack be the name of someone? Furthermore, how was I beginning to remember these things? I never spoke a word of French or Spanish in my life, nor do I ever remember ever hearing these things as well. It was a minute before midnight, and while the clock struck midnight, the bells tolled, and the hallway seemed to get colder. I was reluctant, but I decided to take ten steps forward. Clearly the spirit of the baby was just a coincidence of presence. And before I knew it, the baby laughed cheerfully. This was mysteriously revealing, but what was even stranger was the cries of Lisa coming from the radio. I stood next to the radio puzzle trying to figure out what to do next. I whispered to myself, Jack? Ten paces before Jack? I spoke into the radio, saying anything that I could think of, any name that I could think of as well. I started with the name J. Justin, Jeff, John, Jerry, J. Jared. <sighs> the moment I heard that, I was just in pure shock. I was shocked to hear it. Such to the point, I was overwhelmed with fear. Lisa was approaching and gaining ground ahead of me. And with such a fast reaction, I was overwhelmed with a cold feeling around my body. This is it. I'm dead. But why can't I move? I tried to run. I was paralyzed. And I was paralyzed with fear. And my heart began to pound hard. Much like how before Lisa violently broke my neck. At the last second, I remembered something. 
never moving a step, his hand in mine, I waited for it to pass. It was written on one of Lisa's photographs. I was in a dilemma. Do I stand here and get violently killed? Or do I take a chance? I could literally hear my heartbeat getting louder as Lisa approached me slowly. I closed my eyes this time and hoped that there wasn't going to be anything bad happening. And just when I felt the cold hands of this woman strangling me, the spirit of the baby laughed again. Without a second to spare, the baby's laugh saved me. The cold surrounding me disappeared, and the phone at the end of the hallway began ringing. Thinking I had escaped from the fate of a murderous ghost, I eased my way to the phone, hoping that someone would answer. I picked up the phone, and I heard breathing on the other side. It was the same voice that I'd heard on the radio, and he spoke. You've been chosen. From the distance, I heard a door unlock, and I never thought I'd ever be happy to walk down those steps again. I don't know why I didn't go through the front door, but at this point, I couldn't care less. I stepped out into the void and began walking further into darkness. Slowly but surely, the darkness began to fill with fresh air, a night sky, and the outside of a town. The sound seemed abandoned, and at the same time there was something not right about its atmosphere. What was even more interesting was the man from the radio broadcast began speaking as I walked through this void. And as I walked through this void, he unveiled something very interesting. Dad was such a drag. Every day he'd eat the same kind of food, dress the same, sit in front of the same kind of games. He was just that kind of guy. But then one day he goes and kills us all. He couldn't even be original about the way he did it. I'm not complaining. I was dying of boredom anyway. But guess what? I will be coming back, and I'm bringing my new toys with me. Was this one of the children murdered by Lisa? Who was this person talking? Whoever he was, he had every right to be just as vengeful as his mother, Lisa. I kept walking further away from the home, the home that had helped me captive. I turned around to look at the place and the environment surrounding it. It was dark, and it was foggy, and there was no way I was going back. I kept walking further. Eventually, I stumbled upon a sign that looked much older than the city that surrounded me. The fog surrounded me, and it was growing thicker. Clearly what I had read could not be the city I had heard so much lore about. This town was notorious, notorious for being cursed, and where its bloody history seemed to bring out the things that should never exist. I read the sign. Welcome to Silent Hill.